Yeah, so I let my truck sit. I let my truck sit a little too long. And I'm hoping charging up the battery did the trick. Cause I got some new parts for it at the house. Good sign. The dome light looks bright. Yeah, buddy. So I will be driving it home tonight. So today I am in the garage with the truck. I'm putting some new headlights on. One of my high beams went out and I went to replace the bulb and that's when I found out that you can't replace the bulbs in these 89 K1500s. You have to replace the whole assembly. So I picked up a little something from LMC truck. This box of goodies has headlights that look like the old ones, but have a replaceable bulb. And this housing looks just like the old one, but look at that. You can replace the bulb and it's a, a standard bulb that you can just get in the auto parts store. And I was happy to see it comes with this pigtail with these pins. So I'm thinking that I won't have to do any splicing. Let's see how this works. So here's the new light. And this, yeah, it goes right in here. Like that. So let's see how this connects to the truck. So I'm gonna start with the high beams because that's the reason I was looking into them to begin with. And they have these two screws that I'm going to take out with a T15 Torx bit. And when they're out, they look like that. So this plate comes off and note that when you put them back in, you insert these into their, their slots and it kind of hinges back to hold that in. So let's now so let's see this should come out pretty easy ah. all right this was just kind of uh at home if you will but just pull it and it'll come out and i don't know if this is always the case but there is enough slack on this wire such that i do not have to access the back of the light so now I'm just gonna pull it out and that's it. And this is usually what you'd have to replace. So this is the plug that's on the back side of the light. And if I match up the colors of this pigtail, I could just plug it in like that. And that would probably work, but I don't like the looks of it. And these are actually pins that seem like they should go in somewhere else. I could be wrong, but I'm gonna keep digging. So I am going to take out the regular light as well and see if that gives me any ideas. What is this plastic piece that is getting in the way? Come on out. These have been in there a long time. A little bug behind there, a little bug. Maybe it's not a crazy idea that those pins just go in because these are the original lights and it's just pins that slide in to this here. Who knows? So I tried plugging the new pins into the old connector and then heat shrinking it. So I'm gonna plug it up and see if I can neatly tuck it back in. And I can't. It does not neatly tuck back in. Time to think about this. Well, I'm going to have to get a little deeper into this. I always think things are gonna be quick and easy and they rarely are. So I'm gonna take this tape off, take the heat shrink off, and I'm gonna take off the grill and see what I can do. But before I went through the trouble of taking off the grill, I tried one more time. I tried to see if without the heat shrink and tape, if it would fit, but it doesn't. That hole there where the original plug sits, does not allow room for the new bulb butt. Yeah, bulb butt. Well, the back of the bulb. So I'm going to 
take the grill off and see if I can relocate the original plug such that it will allow the new bulb to take up that space in there. All right, let's get this grill off. First thing I'm gonna do is take off these lights. In my truck, it's Phillips head screws and I imagine most others are like that too. Take these out, just twisting, come straight out. Ugh. These haven't been removed in a long time. They're very crusty. And I'm gonna play the same game on the other side. This one is really stuck. There's also this bulb's connection right here. And it comes out pretty easy. At this point in editing the video, I realized I might not have had to take the grill off. The wires I needed to access are clearly visible here, but taking the grill off did make it easier. In later steps, you'll see why not having the grill in the way helped. But if you did something like this on your truck, let me know if you had to take the grill off to do it. But let's jump back into removing the grill. And then there are the fasteners that hold the grill on. And I am using a seven millimeter to take these off. And then there are matching ones like this on each side. This one in the middle up top. And there's one more right here. So that should be it. Well, I almost got the grill out. Apparently there has been some trauma to my passenger side front that has pushed this bumper back and it's keeping this area from coming out. So I may have to disconnect some fasteners. All right, so it's the next day and I'm under the truck looking up at the bumper and that is the bottom side of the grill there. So I will not have to take off the bumper if I can remove the fasteners like that that are holding the top part of the grill to the lower part. I don't know what you call it, but I think if I can do that, I can take the grill off and continue with the headlight work. I had trouble getting it out from the bottom, so I'm gonna see if I can push the center pin out from up top, and it, it does not want to budge. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with this. I'm just gonna cut it. This thing is stuck, you need to cut it. After getting the fasteners off, I was finally able to remove the upper part of the grill. So this is the area we needed to get to to free up some space in the back of this housing. And I figured out how to de-pin this connector. Oh, also remember, I have to remember that the green goes on the side with this. So green in the triangle shape thingy. So to de-pin it, I have my tweezers and I'll stick the tweezer in to this side. So if you look at the, the one I've already taken out, it's the side that does not have the, the wraparound. So the wraparound's on this side here, so I'm gonna stick it in over here. A depinning tool would be ideal for this, but tweezers work too. You just have to use a little bit more finesse. And there you go. So with the connector removed, we can pull these wires through the back and have access to them here. So what I'm gonna do is fish these through the back and then connect them. And then that'll allow this to sit deep in the pocket and allow the whole housing to go in. So got some heat shrink. Green to green. Black to black. Hmm. 
maybe I'll go up one size on the next heat shrink because this one's kind of snug. All right. All right, I'm a lot happier with that than what I was trying to do earlier. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, test them and then move on to the other side. Before I depend it, I had to pull this plastic piece out. And to do that, you just push this, you just push this back and it allows this little plastic rod to, to come out. But the low beam is a bit different. So how does this work? And it looks very similar. It looks like if I pull this tab out that way, if I pull this down and push, it looks like it'll release it, and it does. So I can pull this out from the back, perfect. So let's see if the same trick works to get the pins out. And it does. If you get it just right, pushing in in the spot I sh showed you earlier on the pin will release the catch and push the pin out. That's what happened on this black one. Matching up the colors again. And that last little bit is what makes it a snug fit. Goes in pretty easy and that last little The last little bit holds it a little better. All right, time to test the lights. One day I may spray paint these, but I'm in a race against the rain right now, so I am just going to reinstall them. And it seems like it fits perfectly. And this one also says low beam. All right, so the low beams work. And so do the high beams. So now I'm gonna play the same game on this side. Now I'm just gonna put everything back together. Now that I have these installed, it makes the other lights look so old. So, it's not an urgent repair, but that may be something I want to address. Let's see what they look like. It's kind of bright out here, but the low beams are on now. And it looks like I got a bulb out right here. I'll get one of those. So that's the low beams and that's the high beams. I won't be able to see how good they work until tonight, but 
I'm sure it'll be an improvement over what I had. This is my first look at the lights at night and they are a lot brighter. Even driving, the road was a lot better. So I'm glad I did it. I'm happy with the outcome, but if you've used this kit and wanted to preserve the old harness, I'm curious to hear how you did it. If you'd like to follow along as I continue to modify and improve my 89K1500, hit subscribe. If you'd like to see the things I've already done to it, check out my playlist. Thanks for watching. Take care.